Okay, in today's lecture, what we are going to do is we are going to apply the first law of thermodynamics to a combustion process. Okay, so let us let us uh, try to understand from the basic principles uh, how we can get the energetics of combustion and apply the first law. So what we can say is that let us say there is a system here. Okay, and this system contains some fuel plus some oxidizer. Okay, or it can be air also, for example. Okay, so these are the reactants. So let us say there is some uh, reactant temperature, there is a reactant pressure, and there is some uh, system boundary uh, 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 here. So there can be some initial volume uh, of the reactants, okay, and some internal energy of the reactant, for example, okay. And now what we will do is we will do the combustion reaction. So, so let's say the combustion takes place. So so this is let us say burnt, and then this is unburnt, okay. And there may be some work interaction, there may be some Q interaction, okay. So heat heat transfer can take place uh, also from the system to the surrounding. For example, some work can come out, and eventually uh, you will end up with some products here, okay. So these products uh, can also be at temperature T P, for example, pressure P P. Uh, then uh, the the volume can be Vp, for example, and the internal energy can be Up. Okay. So now in this process, we want to see how we can apply the uh, the first law. Now naturally, this process can take place under different boundary conditions. For example, uh, if 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 we take a piston, okay, if say our system is a piston, so this is like a piston here, okay. Now if I stop this piston, then the entire reaction will take place at constant volume okay as we have seen so we can do it at constant volume <coughs> so that means the piston is not allowed to move upwards and then this this is the our system boundary and the reaction takes place the heat comes in now we can also we can also do one more thing we can also insulate the system okay so this insulation will prevent any Heat to go out of the system. So if it is a combustion reaction, okay. So if we apply the first law, okay. So let us apply the first law. Uh, so uh, so dQ is equal to dU plus dW, and naturally here we are following the sign convention that work done by the system is positive and heat given to the system is positive. That is the uh, sign convention which we use. So if you if you apply this, uh, then we can write Q. R to P, that is the reaction to product. Okay, this is equal to U P minus U R. Okay, U P minus U R, and then plus W R to P. So when the system goes from the reactants to the products, this is the net heat exchange process, and this is the work done from the process. Naturally, if it is a combustion, uh, let's say reaction. Uh, in that case the energy of the product comes out to be lower than the energy of the reactants and therefore the difference between this and this is what you get as the heat of reaction okay or heat of combustion now suppose we assume that this particular reaction takes place in a constant volume process that means the piston is not allowed to move out and there is some let us say uh, the reaction takes place so naturally since dv is equal to 0 and therefore dw will be equal to 0 and therefore what you will get here is q r to p is equal to u p minus u r or you can also write it as delta u now for a combustion reaction as we have just noted the energy the internal energy of the product is lower than the internal energy of the reactants and therefore this delta u will actually come out to be a negative quantity okay so this will be a negative quantity for combustion reactions so in under such situation the heat which we get out of this system is only related to the internal energy of the system that means the internal energy of the system will go down and the amount by which it goes down is what we get as heat out of this system so for example we can say this particular reaction which we have just seen taking place inside this chamber okay if the reactants were let us say at 25 degree centigrade okay and then finally when all the heat has been taken out okay so you can actually make a blanket let us say of water which is circulating around it okay you can circulate some water around it and then this water uh, you can you can check the inlet and the outlet temperature of this water okay 
uh, and let the let the reaction takes place at constant volume and so the mass flow rate of water multiplied by the cp of water multiplied by to minus ti okay this eventually when you cool it down the products are also cooled down the products are also brought to 25 degree centigrade then whatever heat has been taken away by this water is actually equal to uh, your q r to p okay so this particular heat which we get as a as a because of the combustion process which is taking place at constant volume by the way this is called as a bomb calorimeter so this is like a calorimeter by which you can find out how much amount of energy has in this exothermic reaction has come out of the system so by cooling it uh, starting with some reaction temperature ending it at some product temperature and between these two states you can find out how much water has been heated up and from there you can find out what is the heat of reaction or heat of combustion so this heat which is called as the amount of energy released okay if we started with let us say 1 mole of the fuel for example or 1 kg of the fuel so it will be either joule per kilogram or it can be joule per mole okay so that will be the heat of reaction which will come out at constant volume okay so this is this is what is called as the heat of combustion at constant volume now as we have as we have discussed this particular reaction can also take place at constant pressure for example let us try to do the same reaction at constant pressure so in that case what will happen as the heat is coming out the piston will start moving upwards to maintain the same pressure here okay the pressure has to be maintained constant so the heat is being added in the system okay the heat is being added to the system and as the heat comes in the pressure tends to rise but this is a free piston so the piston starts going up to maintain the pressure constant so now you will recall from your definition of enthalpy that u is equal to or h minus pv or you can say h is equal to u plus pv so in this case there will be some additional work which will be done by this heat to raise the piston up okay so that that much amount of heat will not be available to you and in this case what will happen you will get your w r to p in this case is not zero because now the piston is actually moving upwards and there is a delta v which is occurring here so w r p will be equal to p dv from r to p or p to r which is equal to the constant pressure which we are maintaining my vp minus we are so whatever is the original uh, let's say uh, volume and what is the final volume so it will give you wrp so if you apply now your first law then you will get r to p minus p vp minus vr is equal to up minus ur okay so this is the equation which you will get when you apply the same first law principle to a process or combustion process which is occurring at constant pressure mind you this is not constant volume so there is a finite dv and this is the work which is done by uh, this system out so this is the work done by the system on the environment to keep the pressure constant okay so therefore if you take this uh, let's say quantity on the other side you you will you will find that q r to p is equal to h p minus h r okay so essentially what we are saying is that this is equal to delta h again delta h is a negative quantity if it is a combustion reaction okay so we have seen two cases the first case was that the same the same let's say uh, reaction was taking place at constant volume in that case the work done was zero and therefore your change in the internal energy was directly equal to the the heat interaction which took place with the system in the second case the pressure was constant to maintain that pressure constant the piston had to move up and therefore this was an added flow work so to say which was happening as far as the system is concerned and therefore by the definition of our enthalpy we will see that your uh, the the heat of reaction which we get at constant pressure this is so th this is essentially at constant pressure 
okay, is H p minus H r and it will be a negative quantity for exothermic reactions uh, which is called as the heat of reaction at constant pressure. Okay. So, we have defined two quantities the heat of reaction at constant volume and heat of reaction at constant pressure. Naturally, if now we have to as you know that the, the specific heat is different at different temperatures. So, the reactants and products will absorb energy also by themselves and therefore, you have to define the temperature at which the reaction takes place. So, if the temperature at which the reaction takes place is 25 degree centigrade let us say the normal temperature then that will be called as the calorific value. So, the heating the heat of reaction is also called as calorific value of course, the term calorie uh, is coming from the history of, of uh, the, the word caloric uh, is connected to heat. Okay. Now, in the modern literature you will see it is called as heat of reaction or so we are defining what is called as heat of reaction or what is called as heating value. of the fuel. So, mind you the heating value is the amount of energy which is released by one complete combustion of one mole of the fuel either at constant volume or at constant pressure this is this will be usually uh, let us say specified in in, a, in 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 day to day IC engine applications it will be typically uh, uh, constant pressure when the system is closed at that time there is no flow work and therefore, we only deal with internal energies uh, and uh, at that time the heating value or the heating value of the fuel will be the, uh, corresponding to the heating value of the fuel at constant volume. So, naturally the heating value at constant pressure and uh, heating value at constant volume will not be will not be the same uh, there, there will be a difference because of this P d V which comes here and we uh, in the flow process we will be dealing with enthalpies. So, the amount of energy which is released per unit mole or per unit mass. So, this will be very clearly specified. Okay. Uh, if we uh, uh, when you read the books you have to be careful about the units which you are operating. So, the joules per kilogram or joules per mole of the fuel when the combustion takes place either at constant volume or at constant pressure at a specified temperature in our case it is 25 degree centigrade. Okay. So, this with this we have defined two new quantities in this lecture and in the next lecture we will see how to use these quantities for day to day calculations uh, when we apply the first law to an IC engine system.